Today in Apple Motion, I'm gonna show you how to recreate the low-key intro found on Disney Plus. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project and change out the letters to say whatever you want. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. From there, we're gonna select the Final Cut title. I'm gonna recommend you set your frame rate to 24 frames per second, which will match the low-key intro and push open. In here, we can go ahead and delete the title background and type text here layers. The first thing we obviously need is a letter. So we'll get our text tool and you can click anywhere you like and I'm just gonna type in NL. After that, I'm gonna push escape to get out of the text editor. Then we can go to our inspector and we can adjust the sizing according to our taste. With it in position, go on down to your timeline and move forward about nine frames, then push O. That will make it so this is a 10 frame long sequence. After that, making sure your L is selected, go ahead and push Command D. This is going to duplicate the L, and from there, we'll go on down to this text box. Clicking on this down arrow, go down to Add Parameter Behavior and Link. After that, we can drag in the first L into this box. What that means is anytime we change the letter on this first L, this secondary L will also receive that change. This is going to help us a ton because all of these are going to have different fonts, but we still want them to be the same letter. Now I'm going to drag this duplicated L forward in my timeline until we're at the end of the first L. After that, with that copy selected, we'll push Command D one more time and drag it forward in the timeline. And we're gonna to continue to do that until we filled out this entire timeline. So Command D, move it forward. Command D, move it forward. Scrolling through my timeline, you can see that I have all of these duplicated L's. And if I go ahead and change this very first L to say something else like K, now all of these will also be changed to that K character. Changing it back to the L, now what we can do is go through each and every one of these and change out the font. Now to make this process a little bit easier, I'm gonna recommend you click on this gear icon which will hide the link parameter for right now. This will make it so that we can just push up on the arrow and move to the next object. With everything set up, go ahead and select this secondary L. Jump on into your fonts and we'll just change this font at random. It really doesn't matter too much. If you find later that you don't like a font that you selected, you can change that at will. We've had this first L, then I'm gonna push up on the keyboard and then we can go ahead and move forward and change this to another font. So I'm just gonna keep doing that until I've changed every one of these L's to be a different font. And if you're worried about them being duplicates, you really don't have to. If you look at the original logo, you'll notice that they actually used duplicated fonts with their letters. So it's really not a big deal as long as you just have an interesting font selected. So now that I've changed the font on all of these L's, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this group by clicking on this arrow and we could even rename this group to be L. Now, if you take a look at the actual animation, you'll notice that there's a slight wobble to the text. So to do that, we'll select our L group, we'll go into our properties and locate the position parameter. Clicking on this down arrow, we can go to add parameter behavior and select wriggle. In here, we can adjust this wriggle amount to whatever we like. I happen to like how something like 20 pixels looks and we can change our apply mode from add over to add and subtract. That means it'll be able to go in both directions. However, you'll also notice that the movement is coming from the center and that's not quite what I want. What I want is the movement to be coming off of the letter. So selecting our arrow tool, we can actually click on that down arrow next to it and select the anchor point tool. Now I can just drag this anchor point directly into the middle of our letter and we should be good to go. With this L finished, go ahead and push Command D to duplicate it. And we can just type this as an O. We can jump inside, clicking this down arrow, scroll to the bottom and find the very first L and we'll change that to say O. Scrolling back to the top, we can go ahead and get our transform tool once more and we can move this O over to the right hand side. From there, I'll collapse the O group and I'll push Command D to duplicate it. After that, I can change the name of this to be a K. We can go ahead and move this over. We could expand it, scroll to the bottom and change the very first letter to also be a K. We can collapse that group and now we just need to do the I. We can move it over and we could go ahead and rename it. We'll jump inside, scroll to the bottom and change that K to be an I. Now I'm not particularly happy with the placement so all we need to do is get this first letter in the proper placement and the last letter to the proper placement. Then I'm gonna select all these, go on up to object 
alignment and we'll just select distribute lefts. So now they should all be evenly spaced from each other. If we push play now, you'll see that all of the letters are moving in the same wavelength and we don't want that, that removes the randomness that we have. So selecting our O group, let's go ahead and re-enable all of our parameters so we can see them and expand that group. You'll find this wriggle text, go ahead and adjust this random seed by clicking on this cycle button. So now you'll see that the O is on a lower level. We can collapse that, do the same thing with the K, and finally with the I. So now you'll see that they're all wriggling in different directions, which is going to add to the randomness. Next, we need to go in and change all of the fonts to be different across the board. This is gonna be by far the most time intensive part of this project, but it really doesn't take too long. So going into my O, I'll select the very bottom letter and I'll go ahead and change the font. Once I've done that, I can push up on the keyboard and change the next letter. And I'll just continue to do that until all of my letters have been swapped out. So I've swapped out all of my O characters, then I can jump inside of my K characters and do the exact same thing. I've completed the K and now I can just go ahead and finish up with the I. And finally, we can go ahead and collapse all of these groups. And if we push play, we should see different fonts across the board. Now you'll notice that the wiggling is just a little bit too smooth. It doesn't have that stop motion feel to it. So let's go ahead and adjust for that. Selecting all of the groups, right click and select group. From there with that main group selected, we can go on up to filters, go down to time and then select strobe. After that, go ahead and set this to a value of two. And that's going to essentially set this whole thing to two frames per second. Pushing play we should have now a nice disorganized look to our text and it's going to look very stop motion esque. Now what is so cool is we could jump in at any time and change these letters out to say whatever we want as long as it's four letters long. You could even add in more letters if you had a longer word you wanted to spell out. You're just going to need to follow all of the steps that we've done in this video. Next, let's go ahead and add in a nice glow effect. To do that, we'll select this primary group that contains everything, and I'm just gonna write the words Loki so we know that it's containing all the letters. From there, we're gonna push K, which will create a clone layer. This clone layer is going to look exactly the same as all of these other layers, but we can apply individual effects to it. So in this example, I'm gonna take this clone layer and I'm gonna go up to filters, blur, and we'll just first apply a nice Gaussian blur. I'll blur that out quite a bit. Then from there, I can go ahead and take this clone there and press Command D to duplicate it. We'll select that Gaussian blur and we'll get a secondary blur that's maybe not quite as intense. We could go into the properties and even back off the opacity and we could change the blend mode over to something like screen. And finally, if we wanted to, we could even add one more Gaussian blur layer and set it out to be really, really far out. But that should give us this nice, beautiful glow. I'm gonna go ahead and group all of these and just put them into a glow group and we can go ahead and collapse that. Next, I wanna add in some nice texture. Now I have some film grain textures that I've downloaded online. I will try and link to something that you can use down below, but pretty much any texture will work. So I have this eight millimeter texture clean. I'll go ahead and just apply that onto my project and I'll go into my properties and change the blend mode from normal over to something like lighten. So pushing play, we now have this nice texture over it but the texture is moving too fast. We want it to have that stop motion feel. So to adjust for that, we'll select that texture, go to filters, time, and select strobe, and we can set that down to two frames per second so that it matches everything else. We could also go into that glow group, go to filters, go to stylize, and select add noise. I'm gonna bring the noise levels way up and set it over to monochrome. We could also change it over to something like the film grain noise, and we can back it off according to taste. That's just gonna give us some really nice texture with our Loki effect. And finally, if we wanted to make it so we could easily change the colors on all of these letters at once, all we would need to do is select our main Loki layer, go up to filters, go down to stylize, then select fill. You'll notice it's set to this dark gray. If I bring that up to white, it looks great. Or we could even go to a red color, a blue color, it's really up to you and everything just works very dynamically. So that is how to recreate the Loki intro by using Apple Motion. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you how to recreate the Stranger Things text fly through animation using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.